there. Welcome back to Julie's Wreath Boutique. Have you seen this bumblebee wreath in your Facebook news feed lately? Well, listen, we're going to learn how to make it. But first, I'm going to show you who originally designed this wreath with Circle Z Wreaths. And she has a great Etsy shop, and I want you to check her out. Her links are going to be in the description box below. A great place to buy a wreath for your front door. So, let's get started okay so what are we going to need to get started with this wreath um i contacted jane from circle z reads and um i'm really happy to show you how she made this or at least my take on how she made this and um what i want what i want to kind of explain is right now there is this trend on social media where companies um, who are probably overseas, I'm not really sure, because they'll say they're from China and from Australia and from um, the United Kingdom. They, they list a lot of countries, so and I'm sure that they can list a lot. But they're saying that they can make these wreaths for like 40 bucks and ship them from England, buy one, get one free. That's insane. We all know if you live in England, if you've ever bought anything from the States and you've shipped it, back and forth, you know that's impossible. You just know it is. And they're like saying, oh, we'll ship you two reads. And they're kind of a scam going on in social media. And it's just kind of, it's irritating to me as well because they're taking people's pictures without their permission. And whenever I see a post on Facebook of a wreath and it's like a sponsored post and it's obviously not, you know, there's a difference between like if I was to sponsor a post or an actual wreath maker was to sponsor a post. This is not wreath makers. They take people's pictures and then they say they can make what you see and it's just kind of, it's just kind of a scam in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make it yourself, but also if you just enjoy watching the videos and watching me make them and you want to purchase one, go to Circle Z Reads, go to Jane's shop and purchase one from her. She's got great prices. She's got great reviews and she's made a lot of reads. And if anything, she makes a lot of reads that are like mine. So anyway, so make sure you give her some love and Jane, thank you. I, I appreciate, um, you sharing your beautiful design with everybody. It's just gorgeous. I don't have the same bees as you were able to use, but I have an alternative. So if you can get those little bees, I think she got them maybe from craftoutlet.com. Not sure, I, I didn't ask her about that. But I did get these from the wreath shop and it, it came with three of them. And you're just gonna like bend it back and you know shape your little bee. And I'm gonna just cut this off. But I think that that is really cute too. And I think you could even make these on your own if you had the right tools and supplies. But Julie, stop talking, let's get on with it, all right. So we're gonna use a 10 inch wire wreath frame. Um, this is the typical um, wreath frame that I used to use a lot and I used to send you guys to um, Consumer Crafts. I just have a lot in my stash that I had ordered um, and just kept on hand. There's a couple places that are selling these and I will leave links in the description box, but you can also use this wreath form. Hold on. You can also use these wreath forms from the wreath shop and Trendy Tree is supposed to be getting them in as well. Um, you're just going to follow the directions. You're still going to use the same things. It might make a little bit more voluminous wreath, more the way that it sits, but you could use this as well. Okay. So what we're going to do is let's talk about the poly burlap. We are going to use four different poly burlaps here. We're going to use all 10 inches and let me get the little, this is what these are called. These are called a poly burlap check mesh. Okay. And some people call it a window pane, but this is what it looks like. It's just, um, a, it has gaps in it, and this is kind of the look of it. So one is yellow and black, one is just all yellow, and then we're just gonna use um, the black 10 inch and the yellow 10 inch. And we're gonna go through how many cuts and what we use by the end of the video. So that's what's important about watching the whole video because Julie changes her mind. You guys know that Julie can, <laughs> Julie likes to change things on you. And so make sure you watch till the end because I will put on the screen how many petals I use for each um, section or each layer, I should say. So let's get started. 
Okay, so one thing we're gonna do before we get started, always check the description box of my videos. In the description box is where I have all the links of the places I like to shop at, like the ReShop and Trendy Tree, Dollar Tree, um, and all those places, okay? I can't even remember everything that's in the, in the, in the list. Um, my Amazon link is in there and that will have like any of my tools, any of my wood burners, um, glue guns, glue sticks, anything that I use are, are typically in that list or that link. And even shipping boxes. I have a list of shipping boxes I use as well, and it's in that link. All right, for Amazon. Now, all of those are affiliate links. When you use those, yes, I receive a little bit of a commission. It's not, not a huge one, but it does add up over time, and I appreciate it because that's how I can keep making videos for you guys is when you use those links and you help my family and I appreciate it more than you know. So with that being said, whenever I have a video, check that description box at the bottom at least is the supply list for this wreath. So what's the first step? You've seen me do this before, plastic canvas mesh. This is from Hobby Lobby. As you can see, I've already used some of it, but um, you can now get this at the reshop and I think Trendy Tree will be getting it soon as well. So um, basically all we're gonna do is we're going to make a circle. I'm gonna cut out this circle and then I'm going to connect that circle to the wreath frame at, on the inside frame here, okay? So that's the first step. Let's see what's next. Okay, so the next step is how do you cut the mesh? Um, I've showed you guys this a ton of times. And if you know what to do here, you can skip ahead. It's okay. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how to ch cut through the check mesh. Um, and here's the thing with the check mesh. It can be a little bit, you're not always going to get that perfect, maybe 10 inch cut because you have these openings. So what I try to do is I try to get to the, to the closest point as I can to that 10 inches. Now I'm going to put my sassy pants on <laughs> and, um, I had a comment on one of my quick videos on my Facebook page and um, they were like, I hope you use a mask and you're telling people to use a mask and blah, 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 blah. And I, you know, I didn't even respond to them. I honestly, I just blocked them from my Facebook page because they obviously don't watch my videos. Because what do I tell you in my videos? I always tell you at the end when I'm cutting this, make sure you're wearing a mask because you're cutting with heat, a poly um, plastic, and it, it puts off a smell, guys. So you need to have ventilation. You need to have a mask. If you can have like an air purifier in your room, that's good too. If you have a window, open your window. If you can do this outside, do it outside. So here's my sassy pants. If you come to my Facebook page and tell me, that um, are kind of like, you know, kind of sassy to me, you obviously haven't watched my videos. So there you go, guys, Julie got sassy. Julie said something. <laughs> I just love it how people will come at your Facebook page and act like, um, well, you better be doing this. Well, obviously you're not watching my videos. So there you go. Anyway, so let's go on. I know you guys are laughing. If you're chuckling with me, thank you. You know me, you guys are the ones that watch me and you know how I, how I teach. So what are we going to do? We're going to, obviously I've already cut this. So this is already melted. A wood burner is just going to kind of melt those edges and it's going to help with the fraying. You don't have to use a wood burner. You can use a rotary cutter. You can use scissors. You're going to have a lot of frustration. I'm just going to tell you that you're going to have a lot of frustration. So let's, let's get on with it. So where is the 10 inches? So here's the 10 inches. So this cut here is going to um, be close. I'm not even going to go through the group of um, the lines here, and I'll show you. So you see how I got all that left over? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go through here and start a new line. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of this part because this would kind of just kind of stick out as a sore thumb. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna use that. I believe I need five of these. So I'm gonna just kind of lay those to the side here. So where's the 10 inch? Okay, so here's a good example. So the 10 inch kind of le leans in between them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and it's gonna be more like 10 and a third. 
and I'm going to go through, I'm going to try to close up on the video when I'm editing this to kind of show you. So you can see that. So I still have one side in there. Okay. So I'm going to cut at least five of these. I'll know at the end, I'll pop something on the screen if I, if I needed more. But then you're going to take like your regular poly burlap that's not the check and you're just going to do, you're going to just cut these in 10 inches. Okay. So again, very simple. I go through, I'll start off my roll here and I go through the lines. So if this was the cut edge, if you use scissors, this is what's going to happen. It's just going to fray. Okay. Whereas if you go on this side, it's harder to pull that out. I mean, you can, but you gotta, you gotta pull, you gotta tug. There you go. You gotta tug it really hard. So my point is that's why the wood burner is helpful. So I'm going to cut these out, the other two meshes out, and we will get started. Okay. So now we have all of our mesh cut. So we're going to start with the first row of our petals. Okay. So for this, we're going to go bar one, two, three, and four. We're going to start on bar two. What we're going to do is we're going to take the black petals here and I'm going to take one here. I'm going to take my zip tie and I'm going to just simply put it under and over in that section there. I'm going to lay it there. We're going to make the simple um, single petal. You're going to meet in the middle, gather, flip it over, and just, there you go. You got your petal. I'm going to just place it right there. If you're wondering about all the different petals, I do have a video that I'll link down below and it will kind of give you all the different petals that we do so far on YouTube here. Now, we do have I do have some tutorials that are my premium tutorials. Those links are down below as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on these brackets and I'm going to put um, five petals here and then we're going to put two in between. So I'm going to make my petal here again and as you can see, I've got the finished side on the right of the petal here. And um, you can achieve that by making sure that the finished side is up here and the finished side is up there or down there. So when you go to fold it, you'll keep that consistency. Now, what I'm gonna do is you do one on each of these and then we're gonna put two in between. So let's put two in here and then you're gonna have a total of 15 petals on the, this first um, a row of petals. So again, finished, finished, meet in the middle, gather, flip, and then put this, the left one over the right one slightly. Okay. Take your zip tie. And then I always take the one finished side and put it over that. And if you want, you could start here, do one here, two in the section, one. It's just really whatever you want to do. That's fine, okay? This is just giving you the basics. So I'm going to keep doing this until we get the whole row finished. And then I'll be back with the next step. Okay, so here is my first layer of petals. It's kind of like a basic flower wreath start for me. So um, Jane might do it a little different, but... Um, this is what I, I get from when I look at the picture. So the next step we're going to do is we are going to um, make some of the daisy petals with this mesh. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on row three here. So you've got row one, two, and three, and four. So row three, okay? Same thing if you were using a different frame. You, and you can make this bigger, guys. If you wanted to use a 12-inch frame, you're just going to need, instead of like 15 petals for the outside, I would say maybe 18 petals, okay? Because um, I think that would be right, 18 or 20. And then if you wanted to use an 8-inch, you would just decrease it from probably 15 to, let me think, 
maybe 10 petals. So you're just going to need, you're going to need to roll each of these meshes, but know that you're going to get at least, if you use a 10 inch frame or an eight inch frame, you're going to get two reads out of it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of mesh and all of these are not exactly 10 inches because of the way that the mesh lays and the way you got to cut it. And we've, we've talked about it. So what we're going to do is do the daisy petal. I'm going to put my zip tie right in here. We're not going to put it on the bracket. I'm going to show you what we're going to put on the bracket in a moment here, but we're going to take our petal. I'm going to take the finished side on the right and the left. Okay. And I'm going to form a triangle here. And this is the daisy petal that Dean Michael Designs came up with a few years back. And I will leave her YouTube video link in the description box below. So we're just going to make a daisy petal here. Just going to kind of shape it a little bit. And then I'm going to keep holding it. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to lay it in where I put that zip tie. Do you see where I did that? And I'm going to just attach it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how I can just kind of manipulate that petal to have that look. I'm going to put two in each section. I'm not going to worry about the cross bracket because we're going to come back on the cross bracket and put something else. So let's put another one right here. Take another piece again, finish side on the right and left make your triangle. Let's see here, make your petal. And then I'm just going to flip it and put it over here. So I'm just going to keep repeating this process until we have 10 of these petals in the wreath. Okay. So that's where you're going to get your black and white. And listen, they sell this in a yellow and white as well. You could use that if you didn't want to, if you couldn't get a hold of the yellow and black. You can use this on a different variation. You could use white petals in there because a bee has, doesn't a bee have white on it? It does, doesn't it? I don't know. Does a bee have white? <laughs> Anyways, I think it would be cute. I know, Julie, you're getting your, you don't know what a bee does right now. I think it's just yellow and black. Am I right? Is there any white on a bee? I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to keep, <clears throat> I'm just going to keep going around the wreath and put two in each section on that third bar. Okay. Before I go on to the next step, I want to just make sure, I, I want to make sure that when I explain a wreath to you, that you have the confidence to make it yourself. So I thought, you know, as I was making this, I thought, was I really that clear? <laughs> so anyway, so what I want to make sure that I show you is here is where the bracket is, okay? This is where we put a petal, this petal on that bracket. So where I put the first of in the sections here, if you're using a five section, if you don't have a wreath frame that has five sections, just know that you need 10 of these petals and you're just going to stagger them out, okay? Um, there are wreath frames that don't have, the, a 10 inch might have four section or three sections. So you just need to stagger it out, okay? But if for instance, you're using this method of mine, you need to put one of them here and then you're gonna have one, two of these outer black petals and then you're gonna lay your second petal right there. So does that make sense? So basically you're gonna have a cross bracket here one petal is only between these two, and then you're going to have two, and then there's a petal. And I just want to make sure that you guys know how to do this with confidence. And you don't get in the middle of this and be like, oh, she didn't explain that good enough. So I just want to make sure that you knew that. So I'm going to put one more petal here, and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is now we're going to put the yellow check mesh. I'm going to get one of these out. We're going to do the same petal that we just did. And um, let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna make my petal. And we're gonna put these where the cross brackets are, but just a little lower, okay? Um, so if you go back here, you see the cross bracket, that's where the original petal was. We're gonna put it actually on the cross bracket. Let me see here, let me see if I can show you better. I'm going to put the zip tie on the cross, the cross, <laughs> the cross bracket 
on this section, I don't think I've ever showed you how to do this or, or to put a petal this low, but we're gonna put it right there. So we're just gonna put that right here. And you're gonna go to all five sections and repeat this process, okay? So we're gonna do that on all five cross brackets. So I'm gonna go back over here. Where's my other one? I'm gonna put one here, one here, and one here, okay? And I'll be right back. Okay, so the next step is going to be the all sol solid yellow poly burlap mesh. Um, this is all burlap mesh that I purchased online. Did not purchase this at Hobby Lobby or Joann's or Michael's, okay? And a lot of you guys send me messages having a hard time cutting that mesh versus cutting the mesh that you can get online. So that's why I prefer the online stuff, guys. And I will try to leave links if I can find them for these products, but I do know that the ReShop carries it and Trendy Tree should be um, have these as well. So um, in the next part, we're gonna work on the plastic canvas mesh. I'm going to kind of just, let's see, it's about an inch to an inch and a quarter into the wreath here. I'm going to put my first zip tie. Okay. And we're just going to do another daisy wreath. Okay. Or daisy petal, I should say. <laughs> Again, I'm going to put the finished edges on the side there and I'm going to just gather it. And this will make a nicer, easier daisy petal just simply because I can cut these right at 10 inches. So I'm going to just take this and I'm going to put it right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep going and then you're just gonna kinda fold it over a little bit. And then I'm just gonna keep making, adding daisy petals. And I'm gonna just like, I think I did this in the last video I did um, of the American, um, kind of like the Americana uh, flower I did or patriotic flower. So I'm just gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna put another one here. We're gonna do maybe seven petals, maybe eight. It just kind of depends on how many we need. And I'm just gonna put all these petals in the center. And then we'll work on what we're gonna use as our center of our flower. So yeah, I'm gonna just overlap that ever so much. Okay, so that's the base of your flowers. But before we go to the center, let's talk about how many petals we used for this. Okay, for a 10 inch wreath frame, we used 15 of the black petals, 10 of the yellow and black check, five of the yellow check, and eight of the solid yellow 10 inch poly um, burlap, okay? So I wanted to get that out there to make sure that you guys know exactly how many petals for a 10 inch wreath. So if you got um, a roll of each of these colors, you're gonna be able to make at least two wreaths if you're using a 10 inch wreath form. If you were using a 12 inch wreath form, you probably would need to um, either do less of the black, maybe just do 15 um, petals of the black, but it just kind of depends. It's just your preference. You could space these out a little bit more and it, it would still be fine, okay? Um, and then you could keep everything else pretty much the same or a few more and you'd have enough or two. But let's work on the center now. There are several ways to make a black center. Number one, you can use a pre-made center. That's what I'm gonna use on this wreath, but they don't sell, or at least I haven't seen. If they sell these, I'll check. Um, I'm not sure, I don't, I think I've not seen the black ones, but what I did was I just spray painted. I had these lighter brown um, pre-made finishes. I think these are like seven inches or almost seven inches in, in diameter. And so what I did, we had some nice days here in Michigan, surprise, surprise, but um, I spray painted one of these black. It just took two coats and I think it turned out really good. And I think this is gonna be really pretty on this wreath. Now, another version of what you could be doing is you could, I'm gonna leave you a link and you can um, watch the video where I show you how to do this black um, 
um, braiding and cording and where you can use it on one of these little canvases. This would be big enough for the middle of this wreath, okay? Another way, and the, the video link is in the description box below, you can get these Dollar Tree foam um, discs. They, they come two for a buck at Dollar Tree, which is a great value. And you can make it using this. I can share another video either using this or like a cording that was maybe in black, but in this color, okay? So I'm gonna share the video. It's a Christmas tutorial that I actually use this. And I even, I believe, shaved down part of this to kind of give that rounded look like a flower does because the flower's not gonna have that hard look. So um, I'm gonna share those two links that you can watch. And I will try to put the timestamp in the description box so that you can just fast forward in that video to where those centers are. But I don't wanna keep teaching the same thing over and over again, okay? So what are we gonna do with this center? Basically, because there is no um, way to attach it, I mean, you could glue it in your wreath, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna take a wire. I'm gonna take a wire as a piece of felt, and I'm gonna take some floral pens and some um, extra uh, tea pens as well. They're like quilters pens, but I'm gonna cut down, you can cut down these floral pens and um, it always flies up, <laughs> so be careful. I've got glasses on, so I'm good. But this way you can just make them shorter, all right? So I just go, I'm just gonna put my wire across and then I'm going to place my pins down. And I usually do it at an angle. Get my glue gun here. And I like to use Gorilla Glue Sticks. There, I got a little piece there. I like the Gorilla Glue Sticks. That's what I use. They're in my Amazon shop. And then I get these quilter tea pens. And I just like the fact that these have that flat. They look like a tea. So you can see that there. And I just like that it has a little bit extra hold when you're putting it in your styrofoam base. But I just find these, these sort of um, sensors are just really handy to use. Let me just finish that up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have this ready to go to put on my wreath. All I did was I cut the bee off of the stem here. And then what I'm gonna do, it kind of depends on what, what what kind of bee you're using. I'm just gonna glue this on because I know my customers, this is like an indoor wreath. So I'm just gonna glue this on and I think it would stay, even with Gorilla Glue, I think it would stay, but you could get a long pen. And for this particular bee, this is foam. You could run the pen through the foam and then just slide the pipe cleaners back over it. But um, I think this is totally a doable project. I just don't have the time to sit and figure it out, but that's what I'm gonna do. So let's get the wreath and put this in it. So I'm not gonna add it until after I've put my um, center into this wreath. So you're just gonna find a spot for it to go in on each side here. There you go. I'm just gonna pull it, gonna flip it over. Now, when I'm done with this wreath, I'm going to take a piece of black felt that I've already cut. I'm gonna cut these. And I'm just gonna attach it to the back of the wreath frame. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some black um, zip ties and I'll poke holes in my felt and I'm just gonna attach it to the wreath frame. It's really easy. I have another video. I'll share it in the link below. It's like a two minute video on how to cover the backs of your wreaths. And then you just hang it from the wreath frame itself. You don't need to make another hook or anything. So let's flip this over. So basically I'm just gonna kind of come and this, there's a spot right here I don't love. So I think that's gonna be like where I want my bee to go. So I'm gonna kind of look here and just kind of eyeball him and see where I want him to go. If I want him to be more in the center, kind of like him like this. So I'm gonna put some glue on the back of him here. And it's gonna, you're gonna have to hold it down for a few minutes, just so you know, okay? 
So I'm gonna hold this down and I'll be back in a moment. All right, I think it's super cute. Um, the only issue is that my, the black on the head of the, of the bee, it kind of blends in, but that's okay. But if you wanted to use like a yellow sensor, that would be pretty too. Um, just be creative. Um, first of all, thank you to Jane from Circle Z Wreaths. Make sure you check her out on Facebook and her Etsy shop. If you're looking for a wreath to buy, check her shop out. All the links are in the description box below. But if you've made it this far in the video, I don't know if there's a B in the emoji um, selections, but leave me something that reminds you of summer in the comments below. Make sure you click that notification bell and subscribe to Julie's Wreath Boutique here on um, YouTube. And there is an email link down in the description box if you would like to get on my email list. So until we see you again, until we make something beautiful again, we'll see you later in Julie's Wreath Boutique. Bye-bye.